I'm Al Sokolow. I'm chairman of the Israel Matters Committee of Congregation Beit HaMarim. Welcome to all. It's my pleasure then to introduce Yitzhak, Yitzhak Santis, who is the director of Mid-Eastern Affairs for the Jewish Community Relations Council of uh, San Francisco and the Greater Bay Area. It's got such a long title. It's San Francisco, East Bay, North Bay, South Bay, and so forth. But it started out as San Francisco and then it expanded. And we're delighted to have him here. He's been on this job for about 14 years. Uh, before that, I believe um, you've probably read this, uh, he worked for um, uh, Benet, was it Benet? No, ADL. ADL. ADL in the Ohio area. And uh, I don't think his topic needs any further introduction. The title is provocative enough. Uh, and he will, of course, entertain questions and discussion after the formal comments. It's our <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I usually am a tenor, a little, little higher than what, I'm, what you're hearing right now. Um, so we're, a quick word about the Jewish Community Relations Council. We're a council of organizations. We're made up of 80 Jewish synagogues and uh, organizations in the Bay Area, uh, the purpose of which is to develop consensus on a wide range of issues, um, domestic and international and national. Um, for the Jewish community. We are a council, meaning organizations sit around the table and discuss, and we try to find consensus. And, and if you want to learn more about our organization, I'd love to tell you about it um, sometime. It's, uh, it's uh, quite an important organization, I believe. I wouldn't work for it otherwise. Um, and there are some sign-up sheets in case you want to be on our emailing list for um, our uh, Israel This Week, um, as well as for other items which you may be interested in. Um, we're going to be doing this a little bit like uh, college, since it's a college town, with, uh, with, by saying, uh, please, next slide. So um, we can get started with the, the first. And I would like to draw your attention to the screen um, for the first few slides, and then I'll begin my, my lecture. And this is where I got the uh, title of my, my speech, my, my lecture. It's the Jews, stupid. The uses of anti-Semitism and the assault on Israel and the West. In Europe, the Muslim world, and right here in Northern California, anti-Semitism has undergone a startling revival. Beginning with the renewal of Middle Eastern violence five years ago, following unsuccessful Israeli attempts to negotiate peace with the rejectionist Palestinian leadership. Some thick-headed observers have blamed the victim by excusing this anti-Semitic insurgence as an unfortunate but not unexpected response to Israeli policies. It is time, however, to dispel this myth. Seeking to kill as many Jews as possible at a Sabbath service in Istanbul, as what happened a few years ago, or torching a Jewish school in Paris, or intimidating Jewish students on American campuses, are unjustifiable acts of pure hatred. Regardless of events in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, or one's perspective on Israeli policies, the extremists who commit such actions deserve unconditional and universal condemnation. The Jewish community will not sit idly by when criticism of Israeli policies gives way to blatant anti-Semitism. British writer Harold Evans believes that criticizing the policies of the Israeli government is not anti-Semitic, and I agree with him completely. However, criticizing Israeli policies 
with anti-Jewish imagery is anti-Semitism. He writes, it is anti-Semitic to vilify the state of Israel as a diabolical abstraction. It is anti-Semitic consistently to condemn in Israel what you ignore or condone elsewhere. It is above all anti-Semitic to dehumanize Judaism and the Jewish people. This anti-Semitic imagery in the name of anti-Zionism is emanating from a variety of sources. The Arab and Islamic spheres, from within some sectors of the progressive leftist anti-globalization movements, and the more traditionally anti-Semitic far-right neo-fascists, neo-Nazis, and their ilk. What is surprising and dangerous is how the anti-Semitic themes in all three spheres share common language and common imagery. One example is two years ago. Self-avowed leftist and advocate of the Palestinian cause, Mikis Theodorakis, composer for the film Zorba the Greek, declared that the Jews have fanaticism and succeed in imposing themselves and are at the root of evil. He later tried to modify his statement saying he actually meant to criticize the policies of Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. Yet even in his clarification, he was compelled to raise the boogeyman of Jewish conspiracy. He condemned eminent American Jewish politicians and intellectuals for designing the aggressive so-called policy of George W. Bush." Unquote. All these photos you'll be seeing in the next few minutes were taken at anti-war and anti-Israel rallies in the Bay Area. I want to emphasize in the Bay Area. I am not at all saying that the anti-war movement as a whole is anti-Semitic. I want to be very, very clear about that. But I would be remiss if I were to fail to point out that there are elements within the anti-war movements who are very willing to express their anti-Semitism quite publicly. What we see here are the following themes. In this slide, we see the blood libel. Some demonstrators accusing Israeli Jews of being organ thieves, stealing the organs of dead Palestinians for transplantation into Jews. The Iraq war is a war for Israel with the subtext of Jewish control of American foreign policy. I want you to die for Israel. Israel sings onward Christian soldiers, bringing in religious elements with the S replaced by a swastika. 9-11 conspiracy theories. 9-11 conspiracy theories, which has led some on the radical left to claim that it was an inside job carried out by the Bush administration at the behest of a Zionist cabal in the Pentagon, in the White House, with secret links to Israel's Mossad. A satanic imagery of Jews equation of Zionism with Nazism, which seeks to demonize and delegitimize Israel so as to make its ultimate destruction seem like a just act. And outright calls for Israel's annihilation, smash the Jewish state. All these photos were taken recently in the Bay Area. In parts of the Islamic world, anti-Jewish invective is voluminous. Anti-Semitic themes are increasingly part of the fabric of Arab and Islamic political discourse at the most senior levels of government. Two years ago, Malaysia's former Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad declared at the Islamic Summit Conference that the Jews ruled this world by proxy. They get others to fight and die for them. The assembled presidents, kings, and foreign ministers from more than 50 Islamic countries gave this toxic speech a rousing ovation. The Egyptian foreign minister praised these remarks as being a pep talk. Imagery once associated with Nazi propaganda 
is now common in the Arab and Muslim world. The more common themes are Jews control the world. On the slide you see from the uh, Nazi Germany an octopus engulfing the world, a Jewish octopus, mind you. And on the right from an Egyptian publication, the same theme. Ritual murder, the accusation from the Middle Ages that Jews murdered Christian babies and, and children and used their blood to make Passover matzahs. We find this today very much alive in the Arab world. Nazi Germany used it in the dehumanization propaganda against Jews. In Syria, it is used. The, the Matzah of Zion, that's the cover to a book called The Matzah of Zion, by, written by the defense minister of Syria, Mustafa Tlas, who is still the defense minister of Syria. And over here, to bring things home, that's from San Francisco State University from about three years ago. And if you look at the language, slaughtered according to Jewish rites under American license. Jewish rites, Jewish ritual. That's a direct ritual murder charge at San Francisco State University. Jews as being satanic. Note the similarities between Der Sturmer, the Nazi newspaper on the left, and the cartoon that was uh, in a uh, Palestinian newspaper, Al Hayat Al Jadida, in 2001. Jews as crucifiers, the deicide charge, playing on the Christ killer canard. The Nazis did it, crucifying Germany, and then in September 2000, crucifying Palestine. And this charge, by the way, it's also made by a prominent Palestinian Christian organization, the founder, Sabil, which is held in high esteem by many mainline Protestant churches and is behind the divestment movement in some of these churches. Naim Atik has spoken of, and I quote, Jesus being on the cross again with thousands of crucified Palestinians around him, that Palestinian men, women, and children are being crucified, and that the Israeli government crucifixion system is operating daily. And of course, the traditional, so-called traditional anti-Semites, as represented by the Ku Klux Klan, which have taken up the language. They don't say Jews in those signs, they say Zionists, as if that makes it legitimate. The Holocaust is a Zionist hoax. And we hear that a lot also in the Arab world. Perhaps no better example of the cross-pollination of anti-Western and anti-Semitic totalitarianism is seen in the following photos. These photos were taken very recently at a rally by the Iranian-backed Hezbollah in Beirut. The use of the fascist Nazi salute is no coincidence. The father of Palestinian nationalism, Hajj Amin El Husseini, was named a local leader of the Muslim Brotherhood by followers of the Brotherhood's founder, Hassan al-Banna, who emulated European fascist movements in the 1920s, 1930s. Hajj Amin later became a close collaborator with Nazi Germany at the highest levels. During World War II, Nazi Germany provided El Husseini and his entourage of Palestinian nationalists with luxurious accommodations in Berlin and a monthly stipend in excess of $10,000 in those 10,000 US dollars in the, of the 1940s. In return, he regularly appeared on German radio, touting the Jews as the most fierce enemies of Muslims, and called on Arabs to adopt the Nazi final solution against Jews living in the Arab world. He held meetings with the highest Nazi officials, including Himmler in this photo, Hitler himself, Adolf Eichmann, and others. He often voiced his support for the Nazi final solution. In the March of 1944, Husseini broadcast a call for a jihad to kill the Jews wherever you find them. He even organized an SS division made up of Bosnian Muslims. But fascist Nazi doctrines entered the Arab 
world through other portals as well. Arab nationalists were also influenced by the anti-liberal and anti-democratic spirit of fascism with its emphasis on youth, its pattern of organization, and above all, its cult of power. The Ba'athist party of Iraq and Syria deliberately emulated the Italian fascists of the 1940s. Now, some may dismiss all this anti-Semitism as only a Jewish issue. That would be a mistake. That would be a big mistake. Not so long ago, anti-democratic movements used anti-Semitism to attract millions to their banners and seize control of great countries with catastrophic consequences. Anti-Semitism is seen, and I believe firmly, anti-Semitism is the leading edge of totalitarianism. And this should serve as a stark warning for every person dedicated to liberal democratic values. Small l, small d. What I've been describing has frequently been called the new anti-Semitism. There isn't much that is new about it. And in fact, I would urge us to think in terms used by writer David Goldhagen, who argues that anti-Semitism is an evolving phenomenon, having gone through two major eras, the Christian Middle Ages and the modern anti-Semitism of the 20th century's unholy trinity of totalitarianism, Nazism, fascism, and communism. We are now once again faced with a totalitarian challenge. As with previous totalitarian ideologies, radical Islamism finds in anti-Semitism an important tool, a kind of weapon of mass distraction. And there are not a few people on the far left who are willing to overlook the fascist and anti-Semitic tendencies of the radical Islamist movements, even to the point of collaboration. Anti-democratic totalitarian movements of the past used anti-Semitism to attract millions to their banners. Islamist Judeophobia is the most dangerous current strain of anti-Semitism. It is inseparable from the general crusade against Israel. Jihad is inextricably linked with an anti-Jewish ideology that is also anti-American and more generally anti-Western. We may be facing this problem for a long time to come. Political solutions and ceasefires will, have not, will not solve the problem quickly. There is a global jihad that has absolved, that, excuse me, there is a global jihad that has absorbed the ideological structures of 20th century totalitarianism. The effort to Islamicize the Palestinian cause is fully part and parcel to the much larger revolutionary goal directed against the so-called crusaders meaning Western civilization itself. A quick scan of the 20th century's horrors of two world wars, the Nazi genocide of Jews, Romas, and others, the Stalinist purges, the killing fields of Cambodia, the Vietnamese re-education camps, and the Soviet gulag system should give anyone pause as to the, as to the danger of utopian totalitarian ideologies. I firmly believe that as Jews, we have the responsibility of warning the world of these facts. We are the proverbial canary in the mines. What starts with the Jews never ends with the Jews. The time is short, and we must start now. And I'll take questions. Thank you.